This is the Yud, the tenth letter of the Aleph bait, and having the value of ten. It's the symbol and essence of creation and the meta physical physical others say spirituality so it's all all of those things the form has at least two interpretations first a person in prayer A person in prayer, not, not a very good drawing, is it? There you are. That's a person in prayer, and some people see the um, see the yud as a person in prayer. Others have seen as, and he lifts his heart. He's lifting his heart. That's the little lift in the uh, yud that you can see. He's lifting his heart to God. Let's do an arrow on that. He's lifting his heart to God. Hallelujah. Others say it's it's a flame. Others say it's a flame. And I like that interpretation. It's a flame because the Bible says that the fire of God is the soul of man. The yud then is the flame of the soul yearning to unite with God never at rest until it finds its rest in him in the great words of saint augustine now in the following videos we'll touch all these themes the spirituality creation metaphysical and so on it was after all the very first letter that god used when he began to create and that word was yahi yahi Yehi or or let there be light. Yehi or humility attends this letter, and its size bears witness to that, and because it's a mere twenty-five percent of the rest of the letters, suspended from the line above, as do all the letters except the feet of the yud. Unlike all the other letters, don't reach the line below. And being so small, it also has the uniqueness of not being capable of being divided into component parts. It's irreducibly small, and its indivisibility represents that of God himself, Adonai Echad, the Lord who is one. So this cannot be divided, the Lord is one, he is indivisible. Now it's in this chapter on the Yud that we look closer at the oneness of God and the freedom that his children enjoy in his oneness. God is no static being, but the living and ever creative Lord. A comparison of the words Echad and Yachid can help us to appreciate the God whose trademark seems to be abundance and diversity. Judaism has always taught that the Aleph Beit must be jealously guarded in every way. In modern times, the suggestion came that the order of the letters should be changed to facilitate learning, but this was categorically rejected in the belief that the order of the letters is also divinely ordained. Jesus himself exhibited a precious attitude to the letters when he said, neither a yud nor a tittle will depart from the law. We thank God for the jealous guardianship of the Jews, over the centuries, faithfully preserving the greatest treasure in this world. Even Hitler found himself prophesying of the sure survival of these guardians of Holy Writ, although he was, of course, unaware of the prophecy. We'll look at these things in the videos. Before finite creation could begin, the infinite God had to withdraw, so to speak, in order to allow for the finite to exist. This, this space has been given a name, Tzimtzum, and is a fascinating concept that we'll look at. The Yud is called by the sages the little that holds much. 
because all of creation was folded up within the letter and God released it. In a similar way, all Christians, however small they may feel, have the fullness of Christ folded up, so to speak, within them. And only God can release that fullness. Now the enemy knows this, and he is fearful of the revealing of the sons of God. The church is terrible as an army with banners. He knows his time is short and will do all he can to keep us at a distance from God and the inevitable unfolding of the fullness of Christ. There are a collection of unusual yuds, particularly extra ones, that have been added for emphasis and also, interestingly, for sheer embellishment. It wasn't just the illuminators of medieval Europe who had a fondness for beautifying the text. And who would have thought that the tiny Yud would be able to create a profound link between one of the earliest chapters in the Bible to one of the last chapters in the Bible? Our translators did us no favours with their version of the specific passage, but the Hebrew original reveals a wonderful mystery that is yet to be realised, hopefully soon. We shall also spend time on the numeral 10 being the gematric value of the Yud. 10 is an incredibly important number, being the symbol of holiness. The Shekinah, or presence of God, dwells with the 10. This is the reason that a Jewish service cannot be performed unless at least 10 men are present, called a minion. Once again, we are reminded of the very Jewishness of Jesus' thinking when we recall his promise that where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst. The original pictograph of the Yad, Yud, was a hand, which is called a Yad in Hebrew. And all Christians are protected by the hand or Yad of the Lord. Also, at his right hand sits his Son, our Saviour, Yeshua, Jesus, whose very name, given by the Father, begins with the humble Yud. One does never cease.